Today, I'm gonna catch you up on my grandpa's bike. What's up, YouTube? Um, just thought I would take a moment to uh, talk about what's going on with this bike, where I'm at, um, and catch you up with uh, where we left off in that video there. So, uh, just as a recap, this is uh, this is the bike that I learned how to ride on. My uh, grandfather owned this bike. He bought it new back in uh, 1971. And um, he gave it to uh, my brothers and I. And uh, this is what I rode to high school and uh, got my license on and so forth. So this bike is very special to all of us. Um, this is not my bike. This bike belongs to the family. I'm just the caretaker. Um, when I brought it to Texas, the, um, I made two rounds around the block and the engine seized. What had happened was that the rotary valve, which is behind this cover here, um, tacoed. So it's supposed to be flat and it went like that and dug into the aluminum housing and uh, shot all that aluminum right into the engine. Seized up the engine because it filled it full of aluminum flakes and it was a total loss. Emotional damage! Um, that includes the, the bottom end uh, for the most part because of how badly the rotary valve ground into or dug into the, uh, the casing. Cylinder, uh, well, the, this is the long story, okay. So the original cylinder, which is this one that's back on the bike, um, was pretty well um, fouled up from all the aluminum, as you might imagine. The head was fine, although it had some pitting from where the aluminum uh, crashed into the top of the the, uh, the head when the piston was coming up. Transmission, everything else was fine. So mostly it was, you know, engine specific damage. So what ended up happening was, um, it took a long time, but we had to source a whole lot of parts. As you might imagine, you know, parts are not plentiful for a bike such as this. It's not a popular bike in the States, but it was overseas. So we were able to get quite a bit of stuff from um, Indonesia, um, I think Vietnam, and uh, some parts from Japan, and then kind of sparsely all over the, the uh, United States. Um, <clears throat> so the, so we rebuilt the engine with a brand new cylinder and the um, the side casings, the, the engine cases, sorry, the, the, the ch that are here where you really can't see them. There, there is part of it there, one half. So the case splits in half. So you have to have a case splitter to pull this thing apart. And so that was the case. <laughs> that was not intentional, but there you go. Um, as you can see, everything's held together with Phillips. These are that uh, very, very poor quality metal that Japan put out back in that era. And so I uh, ran into some stripped screwdrivers along the way. That was fun. So got a new bottom end. So I, I failed to mention that the rod and the crank were seized up. The aluminum got into the bearings between the rod bearing and the crank journal and completely seized it up. So we opted to uh, purchase uh, a used crank and rod, which were in very good condition, and a brand new stock-sized piston. More size was stock on this uh, replacement cylinder that we got. I don't know if I mentioned that, but if I didn't, I just did, just then. But hone that cylinder out and uh, put it together and something wasn't quite right. And so the, the, the cylinder never really sealed off. There were some oddities with the way the engine was running. And uh, part of the issue was the old, the original carburetor 
was just utterly worn out, so it was dumping a lot of fuel in there. And so it basically washed out the cylinder, the, the new piston seized, and uh, I had to start basically over again. Found a machinist. I will link his uh, information down below. Um, and uh, he was able to uh, machine the cylinder for me or bore it out to uh, 40 over. Got a stock, or an NOS, sorry, a Kawasaki NOS 40 over piston and ring kit. Um, and um, unfortunately, something happened to that cylinder uh, previous to it being shipped out. One of the fins, it's, that's a cast iron cylinder. It, trust me, it's pretty heavy for a bike such as this. Um, that cylinder cracked, one of the fins broke off, and so we uh, opted to send our only remaining cylinder to him, which is the original cylinder, that one that's on the bike now. So he was really cool about it. Um, he had the fin welded back on. Uh, that cylinder is in that cabinet right there. I'll show it to you in a second. The um, this is the original one that got we that got sent out there. He bored it out and sent both cylinders back to us or to me. I want to say us. Uh, uh, I'm including my brothers and my dad in this story in the sense that collectively we're all vested had a vested interest in this bike. Um, all new gaskets and everything were were installed on the cylinder and head. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention he remachined and cleaned up the head completely. So everything in the um, upper, the, the top end is completely um, machined and new, at, or light new, maybe even better than new. Um, so the, the bike started on the third kick. Another thing that I had to fix, oh, one, okay, so part of the issue was once I got the bike back together, it continued to have this weird issue where it wasn't running right and uh, uh, through some trial and error, troubleshooting, and just confirmation, we determined that the original carburetor was just totally worn out, and um, the, uh, the you know the slide and so forth, as well as the float, which was a keister float, an NOS keister float from this era, but it wasn't right. It. Uh man, I tell you what, Hank, about that and dang old meaning of life, man. It's like this, man. You like a butterfly flapping his wings deep down in the forest, man. They're going to cause a tree fall like 5,000 miles away, man. And ain't nobody see it. Nobody don't, don't even happen. You know, the baby's born into this world. And they don't, they don't got any friends. And got no Didn't actually work as intended. Um, flooded like crazy. It was just like, it was like, you know, Jim Carrey in Liar Liar in the courtroom. So it would just flood out and, and just didn't run right. So um, we found uh, another carburetor from a bike that uh, apparently had never been off the bike before. It was, other than being filthy, m mechanically speaking, it was perfect. There was no wear or tear on the carb at all. So this is essentially nearly a brand new carburetor. It's, uh, my dad bought a sonic cleaner. My dad's the one who got the carburetor. He found it. He uh, put it in the sonic cleaner that he owns. And so the carburetor is on there. Um, and when I got back to Texas from visiting in, in uh, my old hometown, installed the carburetor and we're, we are in business. One other thing I wanted to cover was this bike had some electrical issues that had been going on for some time. And I'm pointing here because this, ha this bike has a magneto. And behind this cover here, I will not pull it off, but just trust me, there's wires. And uh, one of those magneto leads, which was uh, probably like a 22 gauge wire, very, very thin wire, was, um, was severed but it was inside of a, a small insulator, so we couldn't see it. And when I did a resistance check against it, 
initially it, it worked fine, everything looked okay, so I moved on. But I think what had happened was I, during that resistance check, I somehow maybe allowed it to make connection because it was just barely broken. So it must have been connected well enough to, to pass. But I, but I was having issues with the uh, light bulb, the headlamps, the, or sorry, the light bulbs and headlamp um, um, shorting out and bursting. So back to the drawing board on that and uh, pulled the magneto off and the, um, the field windings and discovered the issue and uh, was able to solder that back together, 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 um, and everything passed the checks there. So electrically, now we have a fully functioning system. As you can see, it's got a, a new chain on there. That is not the correct rear sprocket. Um, this is from, that sprocket tooth count is from the Dirk, the G3TR, this is a G3SS, the G3TR, the TR represents trail. Um, so this is, that sprocket is from the trail version of this bike. It has both benefits and drawbacks. Uh, benefit is, you know, I'm no longer a 120 pound boy riding on this bike, which you don't say, which is typically what you might see on a bike this small. I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh now. You can just mind your own beeswax. But this helps with getting the bike out of its own way as much as a 90cc can. The bike factory made around 11 horsepower. And I would say that we're fully um, at that point now. And uh, it runs really, really well. Um, I There is one gas station that sells premium uh, non-ethanol gas uh, here in my area and so there is no ethanol in this fuel it's a straight gas 90 90 octane um, I'm trying to think uh, so I would like to say these are the original miles it, it's original in a sense that you know the, it's all the original parts minus the the case halves here um, this is from these are the new case halves we had to, to purchase if I had been smart so this side uh, mechanically was fine, dimensionally was fine. And if I'd been smart, I would have used the factory side of this case and just put the, the, the new case half up against that so that that serial number would be the NOS or the, not NOS, but the real part number for the bike. Yeah, just before we uh, um, kickstart the Kawasaki just wanted to show you this is the uh, other cylinder that I have this is not a scuff this is where the uh, machine shops home slid out there is nothing wrong with that um, it won't affect seal or anything but this is a this is bored over 40 thousandths and uh, we intend to keep this as a spare you can see where the uh, fin broke off so been welded up that would not be visible uh, from uh, on top you'd be seeing it from this angle you can see where I missed the paint when I was painting that back so anyways I'll have to get that taken care of um, but for now it just sits on the shelf all right so uh, let's see about getting this started and I'll do a walk around right while it's uh, warming up Usually it kicks off, there's the uh, choke. Usually it'll kick off um, within one, one in three kicks. So we'll see what it does this time. It'll probably uh, rev real high since I got the choke all the way. Actually, let me turn that down just a little bit so it doesn't go racing on me. Let's see what happens. Uh, engine is not 
40, 40 miles before it's uh, broken in. So, and in order to do that, I've been keeping it under 30 miles an hour. Another thing I did was to protect the engine because I have the oil injection turned way up. So it smokes a lot more than what it would typically smoke, uh, but I'm okay with that. I haven't fouled the plug yet. Um, it's got one of those E3 plugs in there. And uh, those things do actually make a difference. Uh, for those of you who are questioning them, I don't. Uh, I'm not sure I would use it in my fuel but definitely in a small engine, two stroke, 100% chance, E3 is the way to go. It's been perfect for this bike. One of the things the uh, owner's manual says about this engine is don't, don't go revving it up when it's cold. It does have you know, older materials in there older alloys and you know cast iron sleeve and I think the piston rings you know I don't know what material there are it doesn't say it says don't rev it don't pre rev it when it's cold bad for it so I don't again this is a very important bike to, to my family hopefully it'll last so this is 71 it's 40 or 50 uh, 53 years old so hopefully it'll last another 53 years. I don't think Kawasaki ever intended for this bike to last that long, you know? I think this thing new was like 250 bucks max. Very inexpensive bike. I'm sure they considered it a throwaway bike and other people did, but obviously it's, it's a well-built little bike. So uh, let me show you inside the tank. So, uh, you really can't see that, but it is coated with cream. Yeah, you can't tell at all, but um, the tank was rusted at some point. It's fast back in the 90s. You know, the bike did a lot of sitting around at my grandpa's farm. And so uh, we stripped the tank out and put some cream in there to, to seal it. I'll go ahead and uh, turn on the lights for you so you can see those operating. You hear the idle drop down. It's a six volt system. The horn's kind of funny, listen. That's not a lot there. <laughs> I don't think anybody's hearing that thing. I think that's about it, guys. Um, I think, uh, go ahead and call this quits. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the transmission has a new clutch in it. The old clutch um, had, uh, we didn't realize back in the day that there was a thing called JSO ratings for wet clutch systems. And uh, the oils what we were using, well, they were too slick for wet, wet clutches and it ended up glazing them. And they quit working. This thing slipped real bad. So, brand new clutch pack. And uh, has a synthetic uh, Lucas, synthetic uh, 1030 weight. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up for now. Uh, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Until next time, peace out. Keep it between the ditches.